Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this is the Microsoft Surface Pro 9. This is all new, came out today, and starts at $999 and goes up to $2,599. There's a bunch of different configurations. You can get the SQ3 processor, which is Microsoft's own processor. That's the only way to get 5G with the Surface Pro 9. This actually has the Intel processor, the Evo 12th Gen processor, Core i5. It's pretty much the configuration I think a lot of people will get. It has 16 gigs of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. It's also in the color Platinum. I actually picked up Platinum by mistake. It comes in four different colors this year. We have Platinum, Graphite, those are the old colors. We also have Sapphire, which is more of a blue color, and Forest. I meant to order it in Sapphire, but I think most people will probably pick it up in more of a neutral tone. Now, I also picked up the signature keyboard with Slim Pen 2. This is the same as last year. Again, comes in all of those different colors and just complements this device, but also works with the Surface Pro 8. So if you have an 8, you can move it over to the 9 if you're picking up the new one. Now, let's go ahead and open it up. So we'll go ahead and take the packaging off here, the wrapper. Let's set the keyboard aside for now. And let's go ahead and slide the cover off of this. And there we go. Now this isn't going to look too different than what we had last year. Let's go ahead and lift it out and we'll set this aside just for a moment. Let's see what we get in the box this year. So we've got our paperwork, of course, and it says Surface Pro 9 or Microsoft Surface Pro 9 goes over the different ports and what things are. And then you've got a safety and regulatory guide and that's about it. Nothing really more than that. Now, aside from that, we have our plug that's included. So let's open this up, see if there's any differences here. I wouldn't expect there is. You've got your normal adapter. This plugs into the plug itself and then your typical surface plug. So you've got a USB port on the side and then your surface adapter here as well. So nothing different there. If you have extra adapters, those should work with this as well. Now let's take a look at the surface itself and in the current configuration that I picked up, I forgot to mention it's $1,399.90. Now, as you can see on the back, it's the platinum color, but it's a little bit different this year in that this is aluminum or aluminum, depending on where you live. The back of this or the whole frame of this is no longer magnesium. So as we go around the outside edge, let's first take off the cover piece here. And as we go around the outside edge, you'll see it's aluminum. Of course, we have our camera on the back. We'll talk more about that in a moment. And one thing you may notice as we go around, there's actually no headphone jack this year. So on the right hand side, if you were looking at the screen, you'll see you've got your surface connector. As we go around to the bottom, you've got your connector for the keyboard. As we go around to this side, it would be the left side. If you're looking at the display, we have USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4 ports. They're capable of two 4K displays at 60 Hertz. So it's nice that they've included that. On the top, we have our power button or power sleep wake and our volume button. We also have a little vent around the outside edge. So if you have the Intel version, this is vented and it's not just passive cooling, it's active cooling. So this should help vent some of the heat off the processor. If we open up the back here, the kickstand, open it up. We have a little door where we can replace or upgrade the SSD if we want to do that later on. And then of course we have our kickstand, which is super durable. We can push it right to the surface, even though it feels like it's going to break and it holds up just fine. It's positionable in every way it was before. Now, as we flip it over here, let's take a look at the display. It's fairly reflective, but that's what we've had with surfaces before. And on the front, of course, we have our camera on the front and then we have two microphones. Now let's go ahead and turn it on. We do have two watt stereo speakers with Dolby Atmos 8. And let's turn it on here. There we go. And the microphones are dual far field studio mics according to Microsoft. Now this display is a 13 inch pixel sense flow display, same as last year basically, with a 2880 by 1920 resolution with 267 pixels per inch. It goes up to 120 hertz with a dynamic refresh rate, and it also has Dolby Vision IQ support. It has Gorilla Glass 5 on the front as well. Now as we wait for this to boot up, let's open up the keyboard so we can get this set up. So I've used one of these keyboards before. See if we can find an easy way to open this up. There's no pull tab on this like there is on the surface. 
So you can just grab here. And let's slide that up just for a moment and get this set up. So here we go. Here is the Surface Keyboard with the Slim Pen 2 and it's Alcantara. Just like every year, let's go ahead and remove this pen and it's in there nice magnetically. It should charge there as needed. And again, it's Alcantara. It's the nice Surface Keyboard. I'm not sure how durable it will be over time, but they've held up fairly well for me. Not as good as the laptop though. So let's go ahead and click this into place. Just magnetically adheres. We'll push the kickstand out here just like that and then we can get this set up so if i lay this down you can see this pretty well the viewing angle even though this is tilted way down is actually quite good i can see it no problem from any of these angles it seems it's got some pretty good viewing angles and let's go ahead and continue setup so we'll go ahead and press yes We'll advance to the next screen. This is Windows 11 that it's pre-installed with. And we do have accessibility options with voice down here in the bottom. We've got our speaker volume and then your accessibility options, like I said. And you'll see it says, is this the right country or region? The United States, for me it is. We'll go ahead and hit yes. Then it says, is this the right keyboard? Again, it's US for me, but again, pick the one that works for you. We'll skip adding a second keyboard layout. And it says, let's connect you to a network. So we'll go ahead and connect. Now, as this is connected to my network, this does have Wi-Fi 6E, 802.11ax, and Bluetooth Wireless 5.1. We'll hit next, go to the next step here. It's checking for updates, so we'll give it just a moment. Now we have to agree to the license agreement. We'll hit accept, or we can't continue. And then we can name the device. This is the Surface Pro nine let's see if it'll let us use that name there we go and it says just a moment and again you can see it is quite reflective we do have some fingerprint smudges there just from unboxing it so it's basically the same as any other surface and we'll wait for it here just a moment now it wants us to sign in with a microsoft account so it already is updated with the best of windows and microsoft 365 so it's not even saying office anymore we'll go ahead and hit sign in and let's add my account. Now it says, welcome back, Aaron. After I signed in, it says restore from my PC. That's my gaming PC. We'll go ahead and hit next. And it says, want to use your face to sign in fast and more securely. So let's go ahead and do that. Yes, set up. Give it just a moment. And let's tilt this just so my face is in the screen here. It's scanning me. You'll see there's that moves. And that's it. I'm all set up. We'll go ahead and hit next. I do really like Windows Hello. It's pretty seamless. Now I have to create a pin. So we'll go ahead and create a pin. Now we can set our privacy settings. So you'll see here, location, find my device, diagnostics. Uh, not all of this I want turned on. That's optional. You have inking and typing. Yes, I want that. I don't want advertising on. And you can adjust this to however you'd like. So tailored experience, you'll see tips and things like that. We'll go ahead and hit accept once we've customized it and continue. Now it says, let's customize your experience. Select all the ways you plan to use your device to, to get personalized tips, ads, and recommendations. Let's go ahead and skip this for now. It says, use your Android phone from your PC. So if you have an Android phone, a Pixel 7 Pro or something else, you can go ahead and use it with your PC or from your PC. We'll skip that for now. I can set that up later. But if you have a Samsung device or something else, it works pretty seamlessly. Now it's asking about my Microsoft account and OneDrive. We'll just hit next. It says your device is even better with Microsoft 365. We'll skip that for now. We can either sign in or subscribe to that if we want. And now it's checking for updates again. Now it says hi, and we'll give it just a moment. It says getting things ready for you. And let me go ahead and clean the screen as it has fingerprints on it. And I typically use iClear. It's cleaner polish. It says for Apple, but it works for everything. And it comes with these nice microfiber cloths. I'll link them in the description. It's not a sponsor or anything, but just something I use all the time. So we'll spray it on there. 
It's good for all screens. It's how I clean all of my devices. I've made a separate video about it. Once you're done with this, you go to a polishing cloth and it makes the screen just like new. So now it looks great and we're back to normal. It says this might take a few minutes. We'll give it a moment to set everything up. It says almost there and then immediately jumped right to the desktop with Windows 11. And so here's Windows 11. It's a little choppy there. There we go. We're back up to speed. And it says, do you want to allow changes to this device? Give it just a moment to finish and everything's up to date. That was actually pretty quick. It's still restoring my apps from my last PC. And one thing I wanted to mention before we continue to look at some things here is the battery life. Battery capacity is about 47.7 watt hours. And that's the same on both devices, no matter which processor you're using. They say it's up to 15.5 hours of typical device usage on this processor. So if you're getting their own processor, the SQ3, it can be a little bit longer. But this processor, most of this or half of this is pretty much battery. There's a lot of battery in there. And it says you're in tablet mode. So it's actually just giving me more information about that. And we'll go ahead and close that. So if we take this off here. You'll see that the bar at the bottom expands, the taskbar. If we go back into regular keyboard mode, it shrinks back down. Again, if I take that off, you'll see it expand to make the touch targets a little bit easier. Now let's detach the keyboard and talk about the camera for just a moment. The front facing Windows Hello camera is pretty much what we had before, but if you have the SQ3 processor, you have a bunch of Windows Studio effects. That's due to the silicon that's custom to that device. We don't get all of that on the Intel version. The rear camera is basically the same 10 megapixel camera. So not really any difference there as far as the Surface Pro 8 to this version. Now, as far as the device itself, let's get it back on the keyboard. There we go. Now, as far as the backgrounds, if we right click, we can go to next desktop background and you'll see it sort of matches the new colors, the different color green there. We've got our next desktop background some different options here as I cycle through. So all really nice photos. Microsoft is, is very good at this. And let's check out the pen. Now this pen again is the same as we had last year. It has haptic feedback to make it feel more like it's writing on paper. And if we press this button on the top, it opens up the whiteboard or whatever you want to customize it for. So let's bring it back over here. We'll create a new one. And if we write the word Zolotech, You'll see here it keeps up nicely. We have a little piece that hovers over the top as we move to let us know where the pen is and it's keeping up nicely there. No issues there. If we want to erase, we just flip it over and erase whatever we want here. We also can click this button again, customizable. If we click it here, we have some options. We can select here if we want and just select whatever we want here, change some options as far as colors and more. So. Lots of different things, of course, you can do that's been around for a while with the pen. We can fully customize that down here in our pen settings. So if we go into our settings again, let's go over here. You can see the option to choose which hand to write with, choose what you use the shortcut button for, and then also you've got tactile signals and more. So it's really nice, of course, all the customization you expect with a Surface. Now, as far as PWM with the display, it's something many people ask me to cover. If it's flickering or not, the Surface Pro X actually was so bad I couldn't look at it. So let's take a look at it at 240 frames per second. At 240 frames per second, I can't really see any PWM, meaning it's flashing the display faster or slower to control brightness. The faster it flashes, the brighter it appears, and that can bug some people's eyes. This actually looks very comfortable to look at. The Surface Pro X was an exception, and I'm curious how their own processor would fare in this test. Maybe that's a little different as it tries to save some power, maybe the SQ3, but either way, it doesn't seem to bother my eyes. So that's great when it comes to this device. A few things I wanted to know is it does feel like it's going to be very durable, even though it's aluminum. And also it comes in at 1.94 pounds or 879 grams. Also, I haven't heard the fans at all during this video. Now, of course, I haven't been running a ton of different applications at once. And honestly, I wouldn't use this for regular gaming. If it's going to be used for regular things such as maybe just work, browsing the web, using Microsoft 365, things like that, I wouldn't expect them to ramp up too much unless maybe you had the i7. With the Core i5, I didn't really notice a whole lot of noise. Although if you're powering two monitors at once or running two monitors at once and powering multiple displays and then multitasking, you probably will hear them from time to time. There were some issues with that with the Surface Pro 8 
in the overall noise. But with this so far, it's been pretty good. Now, if there's anything else you want to know about this, maybe you want a full test, some different apps, things like that, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. This was just an initial sort of setup and first look. Let me know what you think of it in the comments below. And also, I probably wouldn't run out and pick one of these up if you have a Surface Pro 8. However, they do say it's 60% faster than last year as far as the overall speed. So it's hard to say if it's actually much, much faster in daily tasks, but it really depends what you do. Let me know what you think of the Surface Pro 9 in the comments below, and I'll try and link some of these new wallpapers for those of you that maybe want to try it on your phone in the description if I can find them. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe, and if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.